House to now adjourn. And I call the Honourable Member for Wills, but the Honourable Member will be able to continue his speech at a later time. The Honourable Member for Wills. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, no, I'm not the Deputy Speaker. The, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this afternoon, members of the uh, Transport Workers' Union came to Parliament House to talk about the current state of the Australian aviation industry. Uh, in 2013, Australia's aviation industry generated over $35 billion in revenue, yet wages only cost the industry one-seventh of that. And the House will be aware that, following the re release of their recent financial results, Qantas asked for government assistance in the form of financial support and alterations to Australian airline ownership regulations, uh, while at the same time announcing the axing of 5,000 jobs. However, many of Qantas' arguments for these measures do not address the central issues that have led the airline to its current position. Indeed, in December last year, Qantas management met with officials of the Transport Workers' Union, and in that meeting their major complaint to unions was that Virgin was running a loss-leading strategy to increase its market share and that the Qantas response was to protect its 65 per cent domestic market share by lowering fares and expanding capacity by double that of Virgin. And Qantas management conceded at the time that airfares were unsustainably low. The capacity battle between these two competitors places downward pressure on fares and hence revenue and profit margins. Qantas's 65 per cent strategy compounds this as it triples capacity growth and intensifies the downward pressure on fares and at the same time increases capital costs. In short, there are too many empty seats and too many cheap seats. Now, Qantas maintain that they will continue to increase domestic capacity this year by 3 to 4 per cent on 2013 levels. This is simply a continuation of a failed high-risk, high-cost strategy uh, which is looking as if it will seek to induce industry-wide losses in the hope of destroying its only domestic competitor and achieving a monopoly on domestic air services. Uh, furthermore, the Transport Workers Union advised us that the Qantas Group have been using loopholes in Australia's special purpose visa program to employ Thai-based flight attendants on domestic routes for as little as $257 per month. And the House will be aware that recently the federal government changed the requirements for the 457 visa program, including the removal on the number of 457 workers a company can bring in without market testing or adequate protection. This is only likely to exacerbate the vulnerability of this group of workers. Madam Speaker, the Qantas Sale Act was enacted in 1992 to ensure that Qantas remained an Australian airline serving the national interest. Yet the wholesale outsourcing and offshoring of jobs, the reduction of full-time positions in favour of part-time and casual workforce structures, the flouting of migration laws and reducing employment standards do not serve the national interest. A repeal of Part 3 of the Qantas Sale Act will not address poor strategic and planning decisions that have contributed to the situation that Qantas now finds itself in. In fact, it's more likely to see a replication by Qantas of their domestic capacity war in the international arena. Now, the Transport Workers Union point out that Australian aviation is vital to our economy and Australian way of life, and that aviation workers have a right to a decent, safe and secure job. Now, to achieve this, aviation employers must stop outsourcing and offshoring aviation jobs with lower wages and conditions, stop exploiting foreign workers using legal loopholes to undermine Australian wages and conditions, and stop bringing down standards in the aviation industry through cutthroat and unsustainable levels of competition. They also make the point that a debt guarantee will not serve to improve decision-making by Qantas management. Uh, the Australian public could find itself funding outcomes that are costly and inefficient without having had the opportunity to contribute to better planning, strategy and decision-making. All risk will be transferred to the public sector, while rewards, if any, will be the exclusive domain of the private sector. They think that consideration of a government equity stake should be conditional on the provision of quality Australian jobs, a commitment to skills development and innovation, the ability to scrutinise and contribute to the strategic direction and growth plans for the airline, 
the prioritisation of national aviation security and the service of the national interest. And I think that Qantas management needs to accept responsibility for what has been a failed strategy. I call the honourable member for Tangney. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Climate change science relates fundamentally to two issues—feedbacks and data. The issue of data